Hi, it's Ann from Super Stitch, and we just got a fun little project here to something you can make. The weather's getting good, you're going to get out in the garden, and we've just got a quick little apron here that can hold all your little tools so you're not reaching for them while you're working in the garden. Put your seeds, your gloves, everything, just keep them handy while you're working in your garden. Let's go make one. We're going to start with assembling our front pocket. Um, I'm working with a canvas fabric here for the main body of the apron and then we've got a cute little um, vegetable print fabric here. If you're using a directional fabric you're going to want to pay attention to that. This one's sort of all over so we don't need to worry about that. You're going to place them right sides together, place the lining and the apron pocket right sides together and we're just going to do a quarter inch seam. We're going to do a quarter inch seam. I'm using my Janome M7 HP foot and plate that gives me a perfect quarter inch. Again I'm using my nice quilt and cut and press, quilters cut and press here and my nice little steam fast iron so it's right here handy next to my sewing machine and I'm going to press the seam towards the lining. Okay, so now I'm going to flip it so that I'm lining up my raw edges along the bottom here. So you'll see now that that's going to create a nice little band across the top. So we're going to give that a little press. Now I like to hold this down, so I'm actually going to use my ditch foot and I'm going to just do a nice little top stitch right in the well of the seam here to give that a little bit of definition. So on my M7 I'm just going to switch out my needle plate. I'm just going to switch this out into my, I'm going to go ahead and put my 9 millimeter plate on and I'm going to switch to my regular ankle and snap on my ditch foot. The ditch foot allows me to sew a perfect top stitch or right into the well of the seam. So I'm going to just going to drop a straight stitch right along here and that's going to hold this down. You could also use a um, decorative stitch. Now we want to base the sides and the lower edge together. Um, so you're going to want to use just a long straight stitch for that. You can adjust your stitch length or if you have your sewing applications page on your machine, you can just go in here and then select basting. And that's going to give me my nice long straight stitch. We're just going to run a nice long basting stitch along the side and the bottom. A uh, basting stitch is just a nice long straight stitch. So it's just going to hold it together for us. We're just going to need to mark the center of the front. of the apron and also the center of the pocket. So this is just this is one of our friction pens and that marking would just iron off. We want to get rid of it. And then we're going to line up those centers. The center of the pocket's going to line up with the center of the front of the apron. Now the pocket will be longer than the front of the apron. So we're going to start by pinning our centers together. We're going to line up our ends and baste our ends down and match up our center. So the pocket will be larger than the apron. 
and make sure that you place the pocket right side up. So both sides, the apron and the pocket, are right sides up. So once again, I'm going to go to my basting stitch and I'm just going to baste these ends together. Make sure you remove any pins before you sew over them. You may also, if you don't like pins, you can also use these nice little clips, especially when things get a little bit thicker that it's hard to pin through. Your little clips are very handy. Where we've pinned the centers together, we're just going to baste about two inches across here to hold the pocket to the apron across the center. So we basted um, a couple inches across where we have the centers lined up here. So the pocket, as you can see, is wider than the apron. So we're just going to leave this excess here and we're going to measure from the edge six and three quarter inches in and we're going to draw a line the length of the pocket. I'm using my nice little eight inch quilter select ruler. So you're going to repeat this on the other side as well. So after we've done our top stitch and we've added our bar tack, we're just going to take this extra fabric here and then we can press a little pleat in and actually when we press that marking will just disappear as well. So we're going to give that pleat a nice little press there and then I'm going to stitch that pleat down. We want to come up two inches. So my ruler is two inches here. I'm just going to make a mark right here. And again, we're just going to do a little top stitch right along the edge. And when I'm top stitching again, I like to use my ditch foot because I can place the blade of the, the ditch foot right along the edge of my pleat and then I can simply move my needle position over. I'm going to use my automatic backstitch, so a backstitch is beginning and end, and I've just moved my needle position over, so I can sew a perfect little backstitch right along the edge of my pleat. When I get to my mark, I'm just going to touch my reverse key. So this is just um, anchored down here to create this nice little full pocket at the top. Repeat this on the other side. Now we just want to add a little bit of a curve to the bottom of our pocket here. So I'm going to use my Sewing Revolution ruler to just draw a nice little curve there. And watch for more videos on our amazing Sewing Revolution rulers by our good friend Kim at the Sewing Revolution in Australia. So we're just going to cut along our nice curved line here to round off that corner. And then we can just match that up to the other side. And we'll trim this to fit so both of our corners are the same. And now I'm, I'm going to lay that over our lining and trim up our lining corners as well so all of our edges have a nice curve on them. We're going to take our completed top and place it right sides together against our lining. And we're going to sew all the way around using a quarter inch seam, leaving the top open. I'm going to use my clips because we're getting a little bit thicker through this part. Instead of pinning, I'm just going to put some clips to hold this together. Or you can pin. We're going to go back to our quarter inch foot 
I'll use my regular quarter inch foot this time or you could use the HP foot if you have that. Make sure that you select if you're using your quarter inch foot on a nine millimeter machine, make sure that you select your quarter inch. We're just gonna um, put a little notches in these curves. You wanna notch your curves to allow that to um, smooth out when we turn it through. Okay, so we're just gonna turn this through. I'm gonna use my, my little point turner, stylus, whatever you have there, to kind of smooth that seam out. Just push that out there and we'll give the whole thing a good press. So just give, give the whole thing a nice good press. And that will also get rid of any markings if you used a friction pen. So after you've turned it through you want to just run a top stitch all the way around and you could, again, you could use your ditch foot, you could use a quarter inch foot. Top tie is going to create the strap and the, the tie at the top. This is a three inch by 45 inch strip. I'm going to measure nine and a half inches in from one end. And my pressing mat also doubles as a measuring. So I'm going to measure nine and a half inches in. We're going to base stitch across the top here to hold this together before we add the tie. So you just want to line up those raw edges from the apron and the apron lining and base stitch those together. I'm going to pin the tie to the top of the apron with nine and a half inches extending to the right. So with right sides together, I'm going to sew the tie across the top of the apron. back stitch at the end. We're going to press the seam towards the tie. So we're just going to press, press the seam up towards the tie. We're going to fold our tie right sides together. So this is the right sides with the raw edges here and the ends here. So I'm going to sew the ends, I'm going to pivot and sew across here and we're going to stop about three inches before the, we get to the apron. We'll do that on both sides. And I know on my machine when this edge gets to this quarter inch line here, I know I'm a quarter inch from the edge and that's where I'm going to pivot. Now I'm ready to do my quarter inch. I'm going to back stitch when I get to that three inch line.
I'm going to clip, clip the corner and we're going to turn this through. Now when you have a long tube like this, you might want to use a tube turner instead of trying to force all this through. Tube turners come as sets and there's different um, thicknesses depending on the size of the tube that you're going to put it through. And it comes with a little tool with, that has just like a little pigtail at the end. The tube turner comes in different sizes depending on the size of the tube that you're turning. And what I'm going to do is just insert that into and pull this down along the tube. And then I'm going to insert poke this little pigtail through and then that's going to just pull that right through and there we go we've turned it through And we'll just smooth out our, smooth those out. I can just take a pin and kind of poke the ends out here. And we're going to give this a nice little press. I'm going to need to turn this raw edge under a quarter inch and then we're going to stitch that down there. So just a little trick, I'm going to use my double sided tape that I also get this from our good friend at the Sewing Revolution. And I'm just going to put the tape right along the edge here. I can press that down peel that off and now I simply just turn that under and stick it down and that's going to hold that in place for me to come along and do my top stitching. It won't affect, it won't harm your fabric at all, won't leave any marks on your fabric. It's completely acid free. So we're now going to just um, do a top stitch all the way around at a quarter of an inch. that is now caught on the back side where I had that taped. You could also add an extra stitch along in the ditch if you wanted as well. If you wanted to add a little bit um, of extra right along here, I can go back to my ditch foot, put it right in that seam. And I'm actually going to choose just a little feather stitch just to give it a little bit of pizzazz. My blade is going right into the seam and with that my feather stitch is going to be equally on either side and just give a little bit of extra a little bit extra top stitching and just a little bit of fun to it. going to 
to take our two D-rings and we're going to slide them onto the short end. I'm going to flip that around to the back and I'm going to top stitch to hold that in place. Again, just to add a little bit of security, I'm going to put another bar tack in there. We're going to make a little loop to attach your scissors or um, something that you need to keep handy that you can just um, drop right into this loop or we're going to put on the front of the apron. So this is a three inch by four inch piece of fabric here. We're gonna fold it in half lengthwise and run a quarter inch seam along the four inch side. Okay, we're gonna turn that through and you're gonna press it so that the seam is centered on the back side. Just going to run a few little zigzags on the ends to secure that. So we're just going to just just finish these edges off a little bit. You can attach your loop to either the left or the right side, whichever whether you're right-handed or left-handed, whichever side you think would be best. We're just going to turn under about a half an inch. And you want to leave a little bit of slack in it. We're going to attach it like so to leave, leave a little loop there. So once you've completed it, top stitched it, added your loop, and you've got your um, adjustable ties, you're all set, give it a nice final press, and you're ready to go garden. Got your apron, but if you need some um, extra gardening tools or some gardening flowers, seeds, or anything, Janome's got a great offer. With the purchase of a machine, you can get a gift card to your local Home Depot. So get yourself a new Janome machine, get a gift card to Home Depot, make yourself a nice gardening apron, get some gardening tools, go out and enjoy the sunshine.